two and a half length lead. Gormley wins the front runner. Gormley takes the lead and Gormley wins the set. Anita Derby. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Spa Babies, presented by Spendthrift Farm. I'm Dan Ullman, along with Nicole Russo, and let's throw up the field for the Spa Baby race for Sunday, August the 16th. We kick off the Saratoga card with the opener. Two-year-old Phillies going six and a half furlongs. Chad Brown has two of the six, bookending the field with the one school of thought, the seven-to-five morning line favorite, the six Navesian Sunrise Three to one third choice on David Aragona's morning line. This is an interesting group. Obviously, we have some well bred horses. It is Saratoga after all, but a couple of horses have run and they've run okay. Yeah. And I, in addition to, you know, kind of weighing the experienced horses versus the debut starters, we'll get into this, especially with Chad Brown's two entrants here. I think in terms of pedigree, this race is sort of a battle of the right now pedigrees versus the later developing distance oriented pedigrees. I feel like we're going to have a couple of horses to circle to watch next time out out of this race. One of those might be the number one school of thought, one of the two brown trained entrants. This is a daughter of Empire Maker that sold for $130,000 as a yearling. The dam is a full sister to AP Adventure, a grade one stakes winning dirt router. Empire Maker on top of AP Indy. It's done very, very well. It produced champion Royal Delta. Yeah, I mean, I would expect this filly to give a good account of herself. She's been working well, but the pedigree sure says distance to me. Um, this is another well-bred debut starter for Chad Brown, drawn on the inside this weekend. I believe he's also in that boat uh, with a debut starter and a very good Saturday maiden that we've talked about out here on Spa Babies. Although this field isn't so large, School of Thought may not have as much potential trouble as her stable maiden in this race. But again, this pedigree really says distance and future to me. I think the extra furlong is going to help the two. Our Flash Drive, who made her career debut last month, got stuck on the far outside in a field of 10, raced wide, four wide on the backstretch, three wide on the turn, and understandably flattened out. We look at this pedigree. She's by Go Sapper, but the dam's a half to fast Falcon, who I believe placed in the Travers. It's the family of Pool Land, a grade one stakes winning router. Our Flash Drive can certainly improve for Mark Cassie. I think so. Uh, ran wide, as you said, in the maiden one by Lucifer. First layer, who we saw as a well-regarded, also ran in the Adirondack this week. A couple in this race emerging from that same maiden. Uh, another pedigree that really says distance to me, especially Ghost Sapper over a Dynaformer mare. I think I'd like this one a little bit more with a little more age. And it's also a multi-surface pedigree for Mark Cassie and Live Oak. Lots of speed on the bottom of the family of the number three, Cantata. This horse sold for $950,000 as a yearling. The dam won her career debut at two. She was a juvenile stakes winning dirt sprinter. She's a full sister to Taurus, who is a grade one stakes winning sprinter and a very fast horse. Medallia Dioro on top. Well, Medallia Dioro, probably one of the the great sires of Phillies in our generation. And I think the six and a half is going to work out very well. Medallia Dioro obviously provides stamina with plenty of speed on the bottom. Yeah, definitely. And in addition to providing stamina, Medallia Doro can sire an outstanding two-year-old. We've seen that in recent years with uh, Bolt Oro, Songbird, and others. Stone Street certainly loves them. A good Medallia Doro filly uh, went to $950,000 to get this one. And you mentioned all the speed on the bottom half of the pedigree. And Steve Asmussen can really do no wrong with his two-year-olds right now. Stone Town is the number four. Let's watch her career debut. Showed good speed, especially for a Bill Mott trained first-time starter. She's on the lead, and she's been on the lead from the get-go. Lucifer's Lair, who eventually wins this race for Todd Pletcher, has been right alongside. Lucifer's Lair is just going to wear down Stone Town in the final eighth of a mile. For a Bill Mott trained first-time starter, I thought this was a very promising performance. We know that Bill likes to take his time with these horses, and she should show speed once again. 
Yeah, definitely. We always expect the Bill Mott horses to improve the second time out. This one's a full to a stakes winning two-year-old sprinter. Uh, even though there's distance further back in the pedigree, certainly expect this one to have that juvenile ability. And she's definitely eligible to take a step forward off that good debut. And here's the formulator fact for trainer Bill Mott. Over the past three years, two-year-old second-time starters in Saratoga maiden special weight dirt sprints, 33% winners, $4.5 return on investment. The number five family time is by first crop sire, not this time. And not this time has gotten off to a nice start, Nicole. Yeah, he's uh, leading the way or tied for the lead, I should say, with five individual winners so far from his first crop, including Hopeful Princess, who after her uh, maiden win came back to be graded stakes placed in the Schuylerville early in this meet. Not this time was a graded winning two-year-old and uh, second to champion Classic Empire in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile himself before injury cut his career short. He was certainly expected to get good two-year-olds and he's following in that mold so far. Uh, he's also a half brother to Liam's map who did very well with a couple of grade one winners on last year's competitive freshman sire list. Nice combination of stamina and speed in this pedigree. The Dama half sister to Royale Michelle, who I believe on the Barbara Fritchie going seven furlongs. Navesian Sunrise completes this field. What a pedigree here. By Super Stallion Warfront, the damn my Miss Sophia was a graded stakes winner going long. She's a half-sister to Materiality who won the Florida Derby. And the second dam provides speed, a stakes winning dirt sprinter. I think this outside post might help Navesian Sunrise a little bit, get settled in the early going, maybe settle just off the leaders in the clear. And you have Chad Brown as well. So plenty to like with Navesian Sunrise. Plenty to like. And I mean, this female family is just fascinating and very, very versatile. My Miss Sophia also ran well on the turf later in her career. You mentioned that there's dirt sprint ability in the female family as well. Um, a lot of the horses in this female family had good tactical speed. You could place them, they could stalk, they could pounce. I'll be interested to see if Navision Sunrise manages to inherit some of that. By Warfront, who's a very, very good two-year-old sire, um, I think the six and a half could suit this one a little bit better than her stable mate. But again, this is a pedigree that says to me that this horse can continue to develop, especially with additional distance. And perhaps it's a multi-surface pedigree as well. Let's take a look at our top selections for Sunday's Spa Baby Race, our coverage presented by Spendthrift Farm. I think you put it beautifully in the opener and saying that there are some right now pedigrees and there are some pedigrees to look out for down the road. Cantata looks like one of those right now pedigrees with the speed on the bottom. Generally, I like my Medallia Dioros after a start or two, but there's so much speed here in the female family. You have Steve Asmussen. I would expect Cantata to run well. Certainly. And yeah, that was where I went in this race. I looked for sort of the right now juvenile speed pedigree, the right now barn. Uh, Steve Aspison over the last week or so has won multiple races with his two-year-olds, including three stakes races between Monmouth and Saratoga. I think Cantata is sort of the right now filly for this spot. But again, I do expect School of Thought and Navision Sunrise, those two Chad Brown, bred in the purple fillies, to give a good accounting of themselves and maybe continue to move forward as we look at longer races in the fall. And like you, I think Stonetown is eligible to improve for Belmont. Might be a stake source or two coming out of the opener at Saratoga on Sunday. Nicole's going 3641. I'm going 3462. It's Sunday Spa Baby Race, and our coverage is presented by Spendthrift Farm.